Hello everyone, this is Paul Bertarelli reporting for AvWeb and Aviation Consumer. If you're interested in an LSA that doesn't cost $130,000, well, you can take a look at the one behind me. This is an Aerotrek 220. Now, Aerotrek makes two versions of this, the 220, which is a tail dragger that the airplane will look at, and the 240, which is a conventional tricycle gear. Now, fully equipped, these airplanes run about uh, seventy-five to $80,000, and we'll take a closer look at this and see what you get for those kind of prices, and then we'll take a brief flight in uh, J.D. Kinsley's 220. The Aerotrek airplanes are made in Slovakia by Aeropro CZ, which has been in business since about 1990. The Aerotreks are essentially the same airplane as the Eurofox, which evolved from an experimental design called the Avid Flyer. It's standard rag and tube construction with welded 4130 tubing and polyfiber cover. As LSAs go, these airplanes are very light with empty weights under 700 pounds. The Avid Flyer was unique for having full span flaperons and so does the Aerotrek. These can be a mixed blessing. They give very good roll control at slow speeds, even sometimes when you don't necessarily want it. Because the flaperon structure is entirely outside the wing, it gives the Aerotrek another advantage. The wings can be quickly and easily folded for storage. This owner folds the left wing so he can share a hangar with a Cherokee. The airplanes appear well constructed, although not necessarily lavish. For example, the rudder pedals are just bent tubing, and flap and trim handles are simple levers with no detents. That exposed tubing leads to the parking brake. The seats are comfortable and there's an adequate, if not large, baggage area. Like the Eurofox and the Kit Fox, the Aerotrek airplanes have clear plastic doors which makes for superb in-flight visibility. The base price of $69,850 gets you a bare steam gauge panel without even a radio. Most owners opt for some kind of glass or GPS in the panel, so typical invoices are in the mid to high 70s. The base price also includes an 80 horsepower Rotax engine, which virtually no one buys. The 100 horsepower Rotax, which is approved for auto fuel, including E10, is the engine of choice. Visibility over the nose during taxi is excellent, and even on a blistering hot day, the open doors make for a comfortable cabin. Given the light weight and the 100 horsepower Rotax, the Aerotrek has excellent short runway performance. It's easily off in about 500 feet or less in grass or on pavement. All right, so uh, we're just off Herlong Airport. Uh, we're west of Jacksonville, and with J.D. Kinsley and uh, his uh, air track. Uh, J.D., I noticed coming out of Herlong, we had a pretty good climb rate because we're spiraling up to get out of that restricted airspace, we're doing easily 700 feet a minute. That's with two aboard. That's two aboard, and uh, easily in the winter time, I see generally with just me uh, 1,200 feet a minute plus in a climb, and usually. I'm at the turn pattern right altitude and we're on 1,000 feet. I'm at 1,000 feet before I'm at the departure end of the runway, so the thing really climbs, great climb performance. Also pretty fast, uh, we're right now around 5,000 RPM on the Rotax. You've got the 100 horsepower Rotax in here. We're indicating 110. They indicated to us probably at this altitude uh, about uh, 150 through. And that's uh, about uh, right around, what, four, a little over four gallons an hour? Yeah, between four and five gallons an hour. Okay, so really, uh, how much fuel do we have aboard? 22 gallons total fuel. 22 gallons usable. 22, uh, a little over 22 total, 22 usable. That's a comfortable four hours. Yes, yes. Uh, so that makes this a pretty decent little cross-country airplane. Yeah, about, about four or four, five hundred miles, you know, and to give you 30 minutes or 45 minutes, of, you know, it's, it's Pretty accurate there. Good, good. Uh, of course, your fanny can't take much more than four hours yeah. anyway. I can't. Now this airplane uh, set up with the Dynon uh, EFIS D6. Uh, it's got the Avnap uh, EXP4, uh, and uh, which is a fairly sophisticated panel. But you can go up from there. You can uh, you can get the Garmin's and you can get a uh, uh, you can get other glass panel options in this. Tricked out as it is, what was the approximate price on this airplane? Right about 78. 78,000, okay. Uh, one thing about the uh, air track through the Kit Fox 2, because this is a very similar design, and pretty much the same design, uh, fabulous visibility in this airplane out the front. Uh, we've got a couple of down tubes in front of us, but we've got these uh, clear plastic doors that you can really see well in this airplane. Uh, so we'll head back to Herlong and uh, do a couple of uh, landings in the airplane. 
Uh, meanwhile, you can find a full report on this uh, on the Air Trek uh, airplanes in the October 2011 issue of Aviation Consumer. I'm Paul Brunarelli reporting for App Web and Aviation Consumer. Thanks for watching.